So next up, we are gonna head over and check out Jamie's rig. Jamie, also known as Enigmatic Nomadics on YouTube. And uh, this is his uh, pimped out Astro van. All wheel drive, by the way. He's got some mud tires on there. Got the all wheel drive symbol. This is kind of like um, Musso's Hoopty Ride. Um, but he's got this totally decked out. He's got a nice little trailer here. Towing all of his stuff, his gear. Yo, what's up, dude? Hey, what's happening? <laughs> so, uh, can you uh, give me a tour of your rig real quick? Absolutely. You just clean it up? Well, I'm getting ready to move. And so everything's all strewn everywhere. And so I'm just kind of striking a balance between getting it organized and doing a stash and dash. I do. We are going to be in town for like a day or two, and it behooves me to have more room on the inside of the van. So I'm probably going to put more stuff in the trailer than I would on a straight up stash and dash where I'm just moving to another 14 day location. I just pile everything in. But uh, so this is where we're at so far. We'll take a quick look and right away you notice that it's all about organization. Morning evening <laughs> morning evening sometimes i even use this but you got a small space you kind of have to resign to the fact that it's going to be cluttered i try to put stuff in the trailer but there's going to be clutter and i kind of have to make peace with it and so anyway i don't know really where to start i bought an astro van off of craigslist for two grand it was all wheel drive i was going to buy a westphalia until I researched and found that uh, the Astro Safari platform with the all-wheel drive was uh, really cheap and parts were ubiquitous. And so I decided on that and it's just been an ongoing uh, project from the day I bought it to lifting the van. I did the lift myself and outfitting it. I put the cabinetry in it before I went out and started living in it. And so I've got a pantry. I've got a place for live food i've got a cabinet here storage storage behind me here's my bed my bed is on a hinge this board's on a hinge and another board comes out to uh make a bed that's kind of triangular and i can watch stuff on the laptop for entertainment as i'm winding down pretty much this van speaks for itself you know you just take a look at what all's going on with it and it and uh it lends to why it was done there's a swivel on the chair it's a dot swivel i paid 120 bucks for uh if we started getting into everything that i did and where i got it and stuff i'd get in the weeds pretty quick because <laughs> you know i just figured it out as i went but i do have 280 watts of solar through a uh Blue Sky 3000i solar controller, which I highly recommend. It's MPPT. If you don't know what that means, it means uh, uh, motion PowerPoint tracking, I believe. And it's there. Are, some people prefer them over the PWM ones. I'm one of the people that prefer them over the PWM ones. I've got a ton of deep cycle solar, you know, uh, coach batteries that the the panels. Uh, charge right here is one of my voltmeters. I have a voltmeter on the uh, controller. It shows that I'm at 15.2, which is the maximum setting for the UB40s. I'm powering, uh, I think that's a 36 quart Dometic with the Danfoss compressor, so I can have uh, perishables and a little bit higher uh, quality of life out here. Mm -hmm. It's all really about quality of life. Thetford Porta Potty, I highly recommend. I bought a cheap. Uh, Coleman brand one first at Walmart and uh, it gave out on me. The Thetford has been in the industry for years and if you're starting from scratch, I for one like to have a porta potty and for secondly like the Thetford as the porta potty. It's just real nice being able to slide out of bed and uh, have access to you know that relief right there without having to exit the vehicle mm -hmm. and all of the things that would be uh, associated with exiting the vehicle at whatever hour or if you get sick. And uh, why did why did you want to live in a van, and what first uh, motivated you to do that? Well, when I was in high school, they posted our uh, our classes SAT scores, and I knew I wasn't college material, so I knew eventually I would be living on a van down by the river. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I wanted to be a nomad, and I figured you could do it in this age. I, I read uh, Timothy Ferris' four-hour work week, and I thought, you know, I could probably do that. I could probably pull that off. And so 
you know, it was just uh, from there, the pieces kind of fell in place. I didn't know if I was going to pull a fifth wheel. I didn't know if I was going to have a class A. I got the Astro Van as just a way to get in the game and be out here. And now it's a little bit too small and I'd like to get something bigger. I really like your schoolie. But uh, thanks, man. Yeah, I really like the size of it. Just a lot of things about it. But I'm out here now and this is really just a sleep. I can be outside and work out and go mountain bike and, and uh, dirt bike ride and stuff. I've been, I've been saying that a, an apartment is really just a place to sleep and to poop and to hold all your stuff. Would you, what, what are your thoughts on that? You're paying a lot of money for a place to sleep and keep your stuff. And it, it goes against the normal dogmas that we were raised in, up in to think that we can actually have a home, but it be mobile. And there's so many derogatory uh, uh, inclinations associated with that that are, I think, I think that uh, they're just kind of born from reinforcement of the people that don't do it. And they're trying to reconfirm why they have a job and why they're paying a mortgage. And if you're watching this and you have a job and you have a mortgage and you're happy and fulfilled, then I think that's what you should be doing. But if you feel like you're just this rat on a wheel just working i mean hey man why don't you just give me my couple hundred dollar cut and send the rest of the guys that are going to get it eventually anyway like the power company and the mortgage and the mortgage insurance and you know all the stuff that goes with that and i better get some stainless steel appliances in my kitchen because i'm gonna have friends over you know they had me over now i gotta have them over and they've got to see how hip i am and you know i'm not projecting that on you that's what i was going through and it's just a for me, it's just a losing game. We know we're not going to live forever, and so we might as well trade, uh, you know, lifestyle over luxury. And I really like the traveling lifestyle and the novelty associated with it. Absolutely, I do too. Yeah, yeah. You feel? Uh, do you feel more free in this kind of lifestyle? Oh my gosh! I have dreams at night that I have a job, and I wake up and I, I realize I'm in this van and this is my life, and I just breathe a sigh of relief. It, it almost feels like it's too good to be true. What would you say to somebody who is thinking about the van life, who sees all these cool Instagram posts, all these glamorized, edited pictures that makes it look so cool? What would you say some, to somebody who sees those things but doesn't really understand the reality of living in a vehicle? This is the absolute reality of this lifestyle. You've got to have a way to make at least five or six hundred bucks a month you know, ongoing to be able to afford this. And you've got to be able to work on your own vehicle when mechanical problems arise as surely they will. And if you can, and don't be intimidated because you can go on YouTube and find out how to do brake jobs. You can find all this stuff out in forums. You don't have to know it in advance. You can get uh, the Bisco, Bisco uh, DVD series on your vehicle, very comprehensive. But if you can do your own maintenance on your vehicle and you can find a way to pull down five, six hundred bucks a month minimum, then I say all of the romantic uh, fantasies are true. Because when I wake up in the morning and I go for walks with the dogs or I go for a dirt bike ride, I feel like I am just on top of the world. I feel like I've, I'm you know, a success. Do you feel like the van life is a good combination for a self-employed person or an artistic person or maybe someone in the gig economy? Yes, we live in the digital age. And if and because we live in the digital age, it's very possible, even with uh, the desire to do menial tasks online, such as translate uh, audio to text for uh, a fee, you can go on Fiverr. Elance, different websites that are, I mean, you can type in jobs for nomads, nomadic lifestyle jobs, and things will come up. You can build websites. There's all, you might say there's other people doing it, but there's always new people coming up that need it. And there's always going to be a demand for it. And if you hone your skills, you'll be, you know, in demand yourself. You just type in enigmatic nomadics in your browser, browser go to the YouTube channel, uh, shoot me questions on enigmatic nomadics, Facebook, and come on out here. It's real. It's a real thing, and we're doing it. He's a. He, by the way, he's a great dude. We just met up uh, a few days ago. Invited me out here, and I feel like I made a new family out here. So, uh, thank right you on. a lot for the hospitality. We will be meeting again in the future. And uh, for everybody <laughs> who is interested, go check out his channel. I'll link it below.